Hello and welcome back to Toy Thursday with Johnny Tiger. The date is Thursday, October 22nd, 2020. It's going to be Halloween soon and next week we will be showcasing some spooky action figures. But this week, I want to take you back on a journey through time. Back to when I was a teenager and when I first came to Canada, when I was first exposed to superhero teams such as Captain America, Avengers, and the X-Men. In front of the camera, you are looking at a very old action figure from my collection. This is Cyclops. But not just your standard everyday Cyclops. This is the version of Cyclops from the Age of Apocalypse comic. What's the difference? Well, it, there's a lot of different, a lot of characters uh, changed from the regular X-Men cartoon comic book uh, between that and the Age of Apocalypse storyline. But one of the biggest change with uh, Cyclops was that I really didn't like Cyclops when he was uh, in a regular X-Men universe. You know, he's just really boring, play everything by the book, your generic Boy Scout kind of hero. He's tall and skinny, which kind of just makes me automatically dislike him. Sorry, I know some of you are watching this and you're tall and skinny. I'm not saying that if you're a tall and skinny person, I am going to dislike you. All I'm saying is that if you are a superhero and you are the tall and skinny type and you are really serious and you just play everything by the book and you, are, you don't really have much of a personality, that just kind of have no redeeming quality uh, 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 in, in my mind. So I really didn't like Cyclops when he was the leader of the X-Men team. But in the Age of Apocalypse storyline, Cyclops was actually working for the bad guys. He was one of the bad guys. And he is no longer, well, tall and skinny. Let's just look at this figure. This action figure is quite muscular. This is uh, got some serious muscle tone to it. A broad shoulder, looking a lot more badass, for lack of a better term than his normal uh, appearance. Uh, rather than running around wearing spandex, this version actually got some armor on his shoulder. And more uh, details to his costume. And there's that gorgeous, gorgeous long hair. The normal version, the normal version of Cyclops, when you see him in the comic, in the, in the uh, cartoon, he either got this mask on that make him look like he's bald or something or he has really standard your normal boring everyday crew cut uh, like so many uh, heroes have you know you look at Superman you look at Captain America you look at Cyclops uh, they basically it's like they go to the same barber shop they, they, they go to the same place for the haircut now this version from the age of apocalypse Gorgeous, gorgeous hair. Just look at that. Look at this side profile, how the hair just covers the one side of his face and go down the back to just the middle of his shoulder, and then it's swept to the side so you can see the other side of his face. I really like that. I, like, um. What, the first time I was exposed to this character, honestly, I didn't know much about the X-Men back then. Uh, me and my brother, we just came to Canada and we we really didn't know much about these North American superhero comics. We knew Batman, we knew Superman, uh, we knew a little bit about Iron Man, and we knew Spider-Man. But that was about it. We didn't know anything about the X-Men. We didn't know anything about the Avengers. Uh, so, didn't know much about Cyclops, 
I didn't know what the heck was the Age of Apocalypse storyline. So when I first encountered this character, this action figure, I didn't think he was Cyclops. I I totally didn't recognize him. I thought he was a different character. I was like, whoa, who's this long-haired dude? That uh, was kind of cool. And of course, back then, me and my younger brother, we did all kind of role-playing tabletop games with our action figures. So. I didn't buy this guy because he was Cyclops. I didn't know he was Cyclops. I thought this guy because how cool he looked, and how he would make a very interesting futuristic uh, uh, one-eye warrior with long hair、uh, for our tabletop role-playing storyline. What? Cyclops, as cool as he was, and like I said, this this is a very old. Figure from my collection. I've had this guy from 1995.、Uh, definitely one of the oldest、uh, figure in my collection right now. As cool as he is, he is not the main focus today. Today I want to talk about another figure that came out at the same time as the Cyclops from the same storyline, The Age of Apocalypse. Also from 1995. Here is one of my really favorite、uh, character from the Marvel X Men universe. This is Saber Tooth. Why do I like Saber Tooth? Well, there's always a Saber Tooth Tiger thing, and I'm Johnny Tiger. I like anything, any character that relates to Tiger, even though. It is really not Saber Tooth Tiger. A、uh, little bit of、uh, trivia, educational trivia. It's a Saber Tooth Cat. It's not a Saber Tooth Tiger. There's never been any Saber Tooth Tiger. It never existed.、Uh, what we call Saber Tooth Tiger, it's、uh, properly known as Saber Tooth Cat.、Mm. But anyway, back to action figure. The the Saber Tooth thing、uh, always. Appeal to me because of well, you know, Saber Tooth Cat, Saber Tooth Tiger. He's a big, mean-looking guy with long, wild hair and claws on his hands, and he's really, really ferocious in the fight. Right there, I didn't need to know a lot more about him to make him one of my、uh, favorite. And on top of that, Saber Tooth, despite having often been portrayed as just another Henchman for the bad guy. He actually has been a lot more、uh, complicated, complex, and a lot more dangerous than、uh, people generally perceive him. If you have not watched the、uh, Wolverine: The Origin movie,、uh, in there you will see how scary the Saber Tooth was as a fighter. He was able. To defeat someone who was faster and who could teleport, he he was fighting this guy who could teleport around him, and he was able to kill the guy because he figured out、uh, with his brain, not not by using his strength, he with his brain, he was smart enough to figure out accurately where the guy was to teleport to next, and he just. Uh, turn to the right direction and cut the guy with his claw and kill the guy. So like, wow, that's really cool. That、like, this guy is not all muscles, no brain. Not to mention, there have been many, many times in Marvel comics where、uh, Saber Tooth and Wolverine go toe to toe against each other. And yeah, a lot of time Wolverine won, but a lot of time Wolverine got. The snot beat out of him by Saber Tooth as well. So this is a this is a guy who can go toe to toe with one of the best hand to hand fighters in the Marvel comic universe.、Um, so yeah, Saber Tooth has always been one of my favorite、uh, character. I can't say he's a superhero because a lot of times he's on the bad guy, he's on the villain side. But there has been times where he fights for the good guys as well. But he's one of these guys、uh, that. Kind of flicker between good and evil, depending on how he feels today. Basically, 
uh, which is another reason why I like him. I generally prefer guys who are a little bit more in between. I, I don't like guys who are so cut and dry hero or cut and dry villain. I like guys who, uh, well, I guess are act more like human beings. I think not every human being is 100% evil and not every human being is 100% good. I think most of us, given the right incentive, will do the right thing. Given the right pressure, will do some bad thing. Like I said, this Sabretooth action figure was created in uh, the same time the Cyclops figure was uh, back in 1995, and I acquired them at about the same time. And throughout the year, one of my biggest wish was that one of the modern company would make a new version, a modern version of this Sabretooth to stand with modern action figures. About 10 years after this first Sabretooth uh, was made, uh, company Toy Biz made a new version of him. And today, we are going to do a direct comparison. I'm going to show you why is it uh, sometimes the new thing is not necessarily better than the old thing. Sometimes it is true the good old days will be better or very comparable. It was a bit of a disappointment that the new one was not as good as it should be, but hey, you know, can win them all. But first I want to talk about why I like this old Sabretooth so much. First, we look at the, the posing of this action figure. It is a little bit pre-posed. You can't get it to really stand out properly because the leg, it's, it, he's got this wide leg stand. So the legs, they don't go side to side. So you can't really bring the leg in together for him to stand out properly. So he's always going to be squatting a little bit, unfortunately. Um, but if you look at the pose of this guy, really dynamic, wide, strong squat and the arm out to the side, open hand, big open hand, uh, like clawing motion. And look at the muscles on this, uh, this scalp, the, the abs, the chest, down here on the side of his ribcage, the muscles on his arms. For 1995 action figure, the muscles on this guy is amazing. I mean, I've seen thousands of action figures. I've seen thousands of action figures. I've failed. I've handled thousands of action figures. And still, to this day, I am impressed at how good the musculature sculpt on this guy was. Just look at the muscles on his back. How clearly defined this guy is. Muscle group on the side of the shoulder blade here, where my finger is, and a clear groove down the center where the spine is, and then the narrow, narrow waist. And even though I'm not really that way inclined, he got a beautiful butt. That's a beautiful, nice, beautiful butt on an action figure. Look at that, the, the, the contrast from his upper torso to his waist to his very toned butt to his leg. Yeah, the legs are kind of small. He, he, he's kind of got a tiny leg syndrome going on there. But uh, that's how a lot of these action figures were made back then. And again, he has this, well, Cyclops just fell over or set him aside because we're talking about Sabretooth. He has this uh, nice ponytail thing going on. Even the ponytail is articulated. You can move this around like that, like that. You can swivel it. Really nice. This, this, this is a really nice action figure. 
uh, articulation wise, even that, even though he's lacking that uh, in posing of uh, uh, options, he can have, he has a lot more articulation than most of the figures in his time. Uh, so his arm articulated as the shoulder, shoulders, and uh, right elbow. I don't know why they articulate the right elbow and not the left elbow. That's just really weird. The only reason I can think of is because uh, the muscle is exposed on the left arm and they don't want to break up the line there. But they could at least articulate the wrist, but they didn't. Uh, the neck, the neck is articulated. Really tight articulation. Uh, the ponytail, the hips, the middle of his thigh, so he can actually do, bring his leg in like this. He can sit cross-legged, like that. How weird is that? You'll never see a saber tooth character sit like that. Uh, anyway, and then his knee, his knees are articulated. So this, this is a 1995 action figure that has a lot of articulation. Ooh. And he just fell over. Balancing him is a little bit tricky because of his weird leg position. So like I said, this is a 1995 action figure that is uh, uh, quite articulated despite of uh, being very limiting in his uh, the way you can pose him. And he's beautifully sculpted with beautiful uh, muscle tone and design. But back then, there was one problem with this saber tooth. I'm going to bring Cyclops back in, so you guys can see what I mean. Both from 1995. Cyclops in the movie stand like 5 foot 11, or some people say he's 6 feet tall. But okay, let's work. we'll go with 6 feet tall. Cyclops is a 6 feet tall, regular size guy. The saber tooth is supposed to be seven feet, over seven feet tall, a giant of a man. But if you look at these two action figures side by side, saber tooth is not necessarily bigger than the cyclops. Then put them back to back. They are about the same size. Yeah, both of them crouching down a little bit, but you know, that shouldn't make that big of a difference. The saber tooth in this case you now have definitely bigger upper body, bigger arms, but as far as general size goes, he's too small. He should be how he should be looming over Cyclops. Like if I hold him up like this, then that would be about right. You now he should be head and shoulder taller than Cyclops, not on the same height. Okay? So that, that was one of the problems with Sabertooth back then. Which is why I always wanted a new version of Sabertooth, one that would be properly sized. About 2005, Toy Biz finally, finally answered my prayer and made a new uh, a new replacement for that old saber tube. I'm going to show that to you right now. This was the new one. This new old saber tube. I think right away you guys that can see this can tell that this something is wrong with this saber tube. And this why this turned out to be quite a disappointment for me. But first let's talk about the good points. He's definitely bigger than the old one. Let me bring the old one back into the uh on screen and you guys can see. Definitely bigger. Now, let me uh, go ahead and pose him, 
squatting down like the old one so we get a more accurate uh, look on uh, how, how they how they look side by side because if he's standing up straight then that's not a very fair comparison This guy is really, really hard to pose, um, and I have to be very careful with him because um, I've broken an action figure in the same line before because of the awkward way their joints move. So that's why it's taking a while, but we almost have it. Okay, both of them crouching down. New saber tooth on the right, old saber tooth on the left. So you can see the new one definitely bigger, which is a good thing. I will say that's a good thing. Putting the old one back. So we can concentrate on the new one. The new one is also much more articulated. He has articulated ponytail like the old one. And look at this ponytail. I want to talk about this ponytail. The, the old one, the ponytail barely come down to his shoulder. Look at that. That's the old one. And then the new one. The ponytail go all the way down to his... Uh, his leg. So definitely a lot longer hair uh, if nothing else. Um, the new one also have articulated neck. The ponytail is kind of getting in the way here. We move that in the, out of the way. The head can go up and down left and right so a way better range of articulation on the head, on the neck, on the shoulder. Uh, go in and out and back and forth and you can do all kind of poses with his arm that's good and then the bicep can turn the elbows I love the elbows because they are like this clicky uh, ratchet joint that really hold good poses uh, the wrist the wrist turn on the new one really good and if, look at the fingers. Even the fingers are individually articulated. Every finger, every finger other than the thumb are articulated. The finger are really nice like that. Okay. Uh, the mid, it can do crunches, the torso, can turn the waist, left, right, the hip can move in and out, forward and back, the knees, and the ankles, and even the toe, the front of his boots, that's articulated. So the new one is beautifully articulated. Comparing to the old one, that's great. I was really happy with the articulation, uh, because at least the new one can get into a few different poses. However, that's about where it stopped. First, let's talk about the sculpt, the sculptural detail. When I put my hand on the old saber tube and check out checking out the muscular detail, it has a definite wow factor. It's a really defined, really cut musculature. I can hold this in my hand and I see this is one hell of a powerful character that I would hate for this character to get a hold of me. This is a character that's going to be able to flip a car over no problem. The new one in comparison, if you, even if I stand them side by side, you guys might be able to tell 
the new one look almost scrawny. Look, the new one look like Sabretooth got himself on the diet. Maybe he's been running on the treadmill or something. Like, the muscle definition sucks compared to the old one. You would think it's 10 years newer, so they should be able to sculpt even better muscles. But that's not the case. That, let me turn them around so you guys can look at their back. The old one has this really clearly defined back muscle. The, the new one, not so much. I mean, the muscle is there, but they just don't have that wow factor to them. And look at what's up with the skinny leg on the new one. I mean, the old one already had some tiny legs, but at least they are very muscular. But the new one, there are hardly any muscles on the leg. And, again, just say, if you look at the butt on the old one, this is a really nice butt on the action figure. Uh, the new one, totally flat, there's nothing back there, totally flat, right? As far as musculature goes, as far as power goes, when I look at them, if I, if I say this old saber tube was to arm wrestle this new saber tube, the old one is going to win. If the two of them get into a wrestling match, the old one's going to win. That's just how, uh, what my impression tells me, just by feel. As far as musculature goes, the new one can compare to the old one. Also, what's really annoying with the new one is, despite of having a lot of joints, the hips move really awkwardly, like it took me a lot of fiddling around to get it to squat down because the hip joint doesn't want to move where you want it to move, like if I try to get him to stand back up, I have to fiddle around with turning the joints every which way to get the legs to line up properly to get him to finally stand up straight. Really frustrating action figure, actually, this, uh, this new one. Now, if he was sized properly, then at least there's that. But let me bring in... I don't have a new version of the Cyclops action figure, but I have Cyclops' brother, Hava or have it, or have a, however you pronounce him. No idea, you guys seen this guy before. I used him for size comparison before because he's a regular size guy. Have a saber tooth. Again, saber tooth is way too small. Have a is uh, six foot tall. Saber tooth should be head and shoulder taller than him, like this. But they're about the same height. If I stand them back to back, Back to back, they're about the same height. Look at that. And Havoc is almost as muscular as Sabertooth. I mean, Sabertooth got bigger on, but that's about it. So, it's almost like they are determined to do undersized Sabertooth character. I, I'm not sure why. So, maybe I'm still hoping that one day. In the future, in, hopefully in my future, that uh, there's going to be a third attempt at this version of Saber 2, uh, and hopefully this time around it will be sized properly and as muscular, as well sculpted as the old one, and the world will be a perfect place. Thank you for checking out today's Toy Thursday. We'll be back again tomorrow, so Fitness Friday. But now, have a good night, and keep on collecting. Well, that's assuming that you collect at all. <laughs>